Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas. People, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host, Dennis Simpson, as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Today's show is brought to you by Central Arkansas's favorite radio station, KVRE. Find them on the dial at 92.9 FM. Stream them live at kvre.com. Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. They're also an award-winning Remax office. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to figure out your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007 or find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. All right, full transparency. Wait a minute, you guys are taking ads? What kind of sellouts are you guys? Man, did I mention we're sellouts? What heathens we are, Randy. What heathens? Yeah. Uh, you know, listen, we, we are uh, warning opinions ahead. There could be opinions on this road. Yeah. Uh, unlike you know, there it, haven't been before. No, exactly, exactly. Uh, you know, here's what's funny to me, especially about social media. And... I'm on record that the beginning of the podcast was largely to kind of outshout the ninnies, you know, to outshout the rock throwers. It's, it's hard. I think we've done a really good job of at least trying and sometimes we succeed, but uh, we recently took on a sponsor. Now we've had a media sponsor and KVRE for a considerable length of time. So at the beginning of every show for a long, long time, you have heard KVRE and us tout KVRE. And it's funny. Nobody says anything, but the minute, I mean, the minute we do something with Claire Nicolosi and, and Remax, it's like, you know, the, the, the bitterness and jealousy among realtors, it rears its ugly head, which I'm not saying it doesn't exist elsewhere, by the way. Maybe if there uh, were 200 other radio stations, somebody would have been pissed off too. Maybe well, it's it. just, listen, it's just kind of funny. So Dennis and I, 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 yeah, I'm like, okay, come on. Opinions ahead, opinions ahead. Number one. And I, I don't think I'm telling our audience anything they don't already know. Uh, we are not journalists. I did go to journalism school, but we are not journalists. HSV inside out is not a journalistic endeavor. It was never intended to be a journalistic endeavor. You will see if you join our Facebook group and we hope you will, you'll find a button at our website, um, that will lead you to that group. But here I will read you the rules of our group and it's a public group. It's open to everybody. Be courteous and kind and don't over promote. Number two, leave government watchdog work for others. Now, if you're a government watchdog, you're in journalism. Well, or you might pretend to be in journalism. Uh, we don't. We don't pretend to be in journalism, nor do we claim that we are, are journalists. It's just interesting. It's interesting to me, uh, people's perspectives. And there's two things that are on my mind that I'm happy to get on a stump today. And one is this advertising thing. And the other thing is short-term rental. And these are two things that I freely admit Dennis and I both have opinions about, and we're happy to express those. You're happy to not have to listen to them. You don't have to agree. We're not, we're not trying to persuade or proselytize anybody necessarily. It's just interesting to me how people that watch CNN or Fox news. So it doesn't matter. Pick whatever wing you want to occupy. Same bird. You'll you'll find you'll find adver you'll find advertising. Um, this is not an inexpensive endeavor any more than television is. Is it as expensive as television? It is not. But there's a lot of work that goes on here. Dennis and I put in a lot of time and effort, and there is cost associated with this. So we have staved off sponsorships or advertising. Um, almost since the beginning. I mean, the interest kicked in, which we were both very flattered by and frankly surprised by, but it kicked in relatively early. And Dennis and I both kind of did this. We're like, no, no, we're not, 
you know, we're not ready. We just, we felt like the show, we needed to get our legs under us. And we just, and, and that wasn't why we started the show. It's interesting, you know, the few people that may want to throw rocks as though if you take on sponsorship, then you can't fulfill your mission, the mission to share information that's meaningful and helpful. The, the mission to shine a bright light on hot springs as though you can't fulfill that mission. If you take on a sponsor, then why are you watching whatever news channel you watch? Why are you watching whatever TV shows you watch? It just makes no sense to me. The logic make, makes no sense, which kind of leads into the whole short-term rental thing, right? I mean, we've got all kinds of, of, of folks who want to talk about some anecdotal story that they heard from some place miles away. And here's, hey, I once heard this happened or that, and it's got no pertinence to Hot Springs Village. I ask on one of, and you're guilty of it because you're the one that started the stupid thread, you know? And so everybody, most everybody chimed in with, with some reason, but you know, then you got a few people that, you know, we, we don't want these short-term rentals. And I'm just curious how those people first experienced the village. You know, I cannot fathom and, and I, uh, every, Miss Clara, by the way, and for those of you who don't know, Clara and I've worked together on a lot of projects in the last time. And, and you know, uh, when when Clara sponsors other events, that doesn't cloud my judgment, nor does it cloud my opinion. She's a sponsor. It's somebody well, and go ahead and tell go ahead and share with our audience the difference between sponsorship and the content that you and I produce on this show. We have made it and you could not uh, y'all know we have opinions. You're, we I consider everybody who listens and watches a, a good fr a friend. And you know by now we have opinions and we have have a, a, a policies, but we have had regular discussions. The absolute immutable, immutable is no one is going to tell us what we're going to put on this show. Am I correct, Randy? Correct. Under any conditions. Nobody dictates That's, who we talk to or the stories that we tell or the information that we share. Nope. Not in any way. And just because they sponsor or don't won't change anything else. I have news for you. Odds are, odds are hundred percent by the end of this year, Randy, we're going to have a lot more sponsors and those people will be in different fields. And those people are people we respect and want to work with. And if they don't want to work with us, we'll still have the same opinion. Well, and I guess we should, we should point out that when we so careful were we in taking on sponsors that that agreement, the agreement that we have right now, which includes one page just a one page, really simple kind of a rate sheet is an eight page document. And the reason that it is seven pages of agreement is it's largely us. It's largely the burden on us of here's what we absolutely commit to on your behalf. Mm -hmm. And one big important thing there is exclusivity. So somebody takes me to task in our group you know, and well, are you going to take on, you going to take on a bunch of advertisers and it's our podcast. We'll do what we want. And if you don't like it, there's the door, there's Make the stop, own. there's the stop button. I mean, I hate to be that cold blooded about it, but that's how I feel about it. It's free country and we'll do what we'll do what we want to, as long as we can. And when the government says you can't, we'll still try to do it. So there there's that, but yeah, there's exclusivity. So are we willing to give love to other realtors? We've had a, we've had a number of realtors on our show that are not associated with Clara and Remax. Um, are they competitors? They are, but that doesn't mean they're enemies. You know, we can all be civil and we can all behave with a, a little bit of maturity that you would think would be befitting our ages as, as mature people. Not everybody does that. Hot Springs Village is not immune to ninny-ism. It's not immune to people that want to that just get up in the morning looking for somebody to hate. I'm happy to be in the crosshairs of some of these folks myself, but there is an exclusivity. So, you know, can other realtors advertise? No. No, because right now, Clara and Remax, as we hit the record button today, that may change, but as we're recording this show, 
uh, Clara and Remax. Clara has no editorial control whatsoever. She has no control over the content that we produce any more than KVRE does or any other future, you know, perspective um, sponsor. And having said that, you know, Claire, you, me and Claire, we, we met months ago uh, to talk about this a bit more seriously. You know, and we all kind of laughed and said, you know, I mean, e- even, even if we got a full plate of people, we're not getting rich on this thing, you know, yeah, hard. Do, do we hope for this thing to, to pay its way and quite frankly, to give back? No question. And you can say, well, that, that can't be, that can't be right. Y'all are, y'all are earning some money. I can truthfully tell you this, every dollar that Clara spends to sponsor this podcast is going to come back tenfold doesn't begin to touch it and, and it just doesn't stories. begin to touch it and we and we don't want that we don't expect mm-hmm. that um you know would we like would we like this to kind of pay its way uh, dennis commits an awful lot of time to this that he could commit to other things so do i um and so we're capitalists we're capitalist. We are not socialist. We are not communist. We are capitalist. And if people don't like it, you know, then too bad. You know, we, we are, we're not trying to be, I don't think we're trying to be, we're, we're certainly not mercenary no. and we're very relational, you know, relationships matter a lot. And quite frankly, the relationship, the reason that Claire, that we said yes to Claire is, is largely because of that, because Claire very early on supported us non-monetarily, but she demonstrated through her actions, her support for what we were trying to do, because however you can love her, you can hate her. You can love Remax, you can hate Remax. That's completely up to you, but you can't deny their community mindedness. Mm -hmm. You just can't because they put their money where their mouth is. Every day every yeah. day okay i'll get and, off, i'll get out of the pulpit no no no. you're fine and and not only are you fine i, I want to make note you can judge us by any standard you want but we have two objectives here number one we're going to make the best podcast we possibly can without question well, without we're trying we're, we're trying. not there we're not there yet we're still a work in progress and we freely admit it i'd admit we're getting better uh, I th- i'd like to say that i think we're getting better but but on the second side of that who on earth would invest we're coming up on we're two shows a week we're coming up on 104 shows or 100 shows easy who's going to invest this amount of time that wouldn't want to return on it in some way sometime come on what are you talking about well and for a minute for a minute of show i don't know put a pick a number there's at least three there's at least three minutes three to five minutes of of stuff you don't see and you can say, well, man, y'all ought to be way better than, <laughs> <laughs> and we should, I agree, yeah. but we're not, well, you know, come on. Talent is a constraint or lack thereof, but we're trying. So we're pedaling as fast as we can. People. <laughs> I got news for you. The people who are at Fox and who are at CNN, they put in 10 hour, 10 minutes for every minute of show easy or hours for every minute of show. Uh, yeah. And they're was- making it, they're making a tad more than, you know, then we're a making more, a little bit more, but, but once again, it doesn't change our objectivity. We are, you know, if they're, if, if, uh, if the media is the fourth estate, that would make us the fifth estate or fifth and a half estate, right? Yeah. You know, we, we haven't, we have a lot of folks from the POA, um, starting with John Paul, who really was the gatekeeper for us early on. And I can't thank him enough. If there's one person that has opened more doors for us, especially at a critical time, when we begin, it's gotta be John Paul. So huge shout out and thanks to him. But so when we have POA people and we get, we get nothing but positive feedback, by the way, when we have folks from the POA on, but occasionally, you know, there'll be the person that wants us to really ask, you know, the hard hitting question, not our job. And if that disappoints you, then be disappointed. I'm sorry, but it's not our job. And and it's just, might we have some of the same questions? We might, but it's more important for us to share what we share and somebody else can go, they can go looking to, you know, to unearth, you know, the real hard hitting 
journalism. It's not what our show is. Our show is largely, you know, I mean, we are in journalistic terms, we are a feature based kind of kind of content. You know, there's there's hard news and there's feature content. That feature content is largely stories. Dennis and I just, you know, we kind of view ourselves as as guys who are digital storytellers. We are trying to improve that skill and you're seeing it. I mean, we're sitting here working on high wire without a net and you're watching us either get better if you view it that way. We hope you do, you know, or you're viewing us as just a couple of boobs who shouldn't even have a show, but, but we do, and we're going to stay with it. So we're committed to this, but we're committed to it because Yes, we're committed to each other. We're committed to you, the audience, now that we have one. Um, Which wasn't a guarantee at any point. No, no. (laughs) Uh, But we are mostly committed to Hot Springs Village. We are absolutely committed to Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. People can question it. I don't care. It doesn't bother me at all for people to question it. Uh, This isn't about trying to bark back. We're just we're completely open and transparent. Um, I mean, my lens, uh, uh, by the time you see this, you know, a month ago, my mother who's 90 years old, you know, had a breast cancer surgery. I was, I thought about, well, do I, do I share that? And, and I, and I did because we're all in this together. So if my family is going through something, so is your family. And so is Dennis's family. Um, I, we just firmly believe that all of us together, we're way stronger. You know, if we can lean on each other and support each other, I get that there are people and there are a few people, not many, but there are a few people even inside our group and we don't ban them. We don't, we don't edit them. Uh, we, we have banned one or two people who got in and just absolutely behaved horribly. We're not going to, we're trying to sell things nonstop. Yeah. We're not going to, we're not going to put up, we're not going to put up with that. But come on, you know, we're just trying to exercise a little bit of compassion and, uh, and understanding, and it doesn't mean that we have to agree. It'd be pretty boring if we all agreed, you know, but I think we need to be willing to listen, which I know is a lost art, but I've gone to preaching again. No, I got, I got to tell you though, you, you've hit on nail on the head and I want to come back to that. The bottom line is, is that, uh, you know, when, I've told people before my philosophy and, and the world philosophy can be, it's very simple. It is extraordinarily simple. Everyone wants to feel heard. I may not be able to fix it, Randy, but I'm listening. Okay. I heard what you said. I heard what so-and-so said. I heard what they commented on. I got it, but we're, nobody's listening anymore. And then you, our listeners and watchers, you are. If you're watching, what are we, 18 minutes into this or something, Randy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, you could have hit record. You or hit stop at any point in here. Wouldn't have blamed you. That's fine. But we've got people who listen to the end of the show. We've got people who watch to the end of the show, not because they're bored and don't have anything else to do. We're entertaining enough or interesting enough that they say, you know, I kind of feel that way. And I want to feel heard, too. And I'll remind you, Randy, we intently and continually say, Reach out to us, call us, tell us, ask us the questions, give us the things we want to work on. You want us to work on so we can get better, right? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. You know, I've got in my email signature for my work, my work email, and I don't know what possessed me, but I was 27 years old when I crafted this, um, it's been email. more than a day ago. That's been email, like yeah, two or email three weeks. Did, email did, email did not exist. I did not have an email. <laughs> I didn't have an email signature. But I just crafted what I called my business philosophy. And it is always be honest, be competent, give more, make it right. I I don't know what possessed me to but I, I've I've pretty much stood by that, you know, all these years. And I think it's befitting our podcast. Uh, Dennis and I both are guys that it, it's how, it's how we're bent. So we're happy to be as transparent as we can be, you know, it doesn't mean that we share all of our dirty laundry, but we're willing to share an awful lot of it. But the thing that we've all got in common, surely 
even the people that may hate us or think that we're sellouts because we've taken on Remax as a sponsor and we're proud of the sponsorship, by the way. And I'm not saying that just for Clara and her team, but these are people that are making an awful lot of dreams come true for an awful lot of people. I mean, to the tune of 158 million bucks or so last year, They're rock stars, you know? So, I mean, these are people that are absolutely making a lot of folks dreams come true uh, to, to move into the village or to find something else in the villa or to sell. Um, I I'm not going to apologize for that. I don't, I don't think it, I don't think there's any apology to be made. And I don't think there's any apology to be made for, for taking on sponsorship, you know, or advertisers. And yes, if you're interested in talking with us and you're not in the real estate <laughs> game and, <laughs> or, you're not, or, and you're not, and you're not a radio station, then yeah, <laughs> then we're interested in talking to you. Or if you are in real estate and you can wait six months. <laughs> we can yeah. Talk to you then. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that we're not interested in having you on the show too, because true. well, Rick Marshall, you know, Rick Marshall's kind of a, a he's kind of a favorite of ours and and we like Rick and respect Rick. Rick doesn't work for Remax. No. But we've had Rick on we've had Rick on the show and I've got every reason to believe we'll continue to have Rick on the show. I do too and Rick has shared with me on the one of the last shows that we've done, he's gotten over $820,000 worth of sales off one show. So if you wonder if advertising can work for you, <laughs> You might want to think that over because we're a couple of goobs just sitting here talking on the cameras from Little Rock or Little Rock from Hot Springs Village to Bedford, Texas. Yeah. And, over and it's last- really, and it's really cheap. No, hey, really well, hang cheap. on. Let me get myself's head on. It's a really high value. <laughs> 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 well, listen, I, I wanted, I did want to offer one thing else, Randy, on a yeah. more personal note. And I, I think this is the right place. Uh, the post that we're talking about where people were taking us to task for taking sponsorships and whatever, mm-hmm. uh, that started out because I got a post this morning from a lady that said, uh, this is going to be tough, Randy. This is regarding short-term rental for those of you that don't know. And if you're not inside our Facebook group, yeah. Dennis got, he got a, he got a, a super nice note from an Airbnb guest who checked out. Continue explaining that for about 10 seconds while I go get a sheet of paper, would you? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. And so the post that Dennis posted inside our group was reason number one to have short-term rentals in hot Springs village. And, uh, the lady's name, which he, he took out, but she said, hi, we are leaving now. Thank you for the incredible experience. I'll never forget it. We took this trip as our last family trip because I am currently living with now terminal cancer. So thank you for giving us this opportunity. God bless. And that's all, that's all Dennis, that's all Dennis posted. And about two hours later, one of our staff went over and was working on the hot tub and he picked up this and I'll show this to you, Randy. I don't know that you've even seen this yet. I have not. And I can, I'll say her name, her first name, Jody. So this was in the guest book. This was in the guest book and the gentleman that does our hot tubs sent it to me and I said, rip it out of the book. And he said, really? I said, rip it out of the book. And he said, why? I said, because we're going to frame it. Yeah. Uh, did you, um, you didn't see the private response I sent to her. I haven't sent that to you. I did not. I reminded her that on January the 16th of this year, a young man and his girlfriend decided to go out on the lake and kayak without life jackets. And it resulted in the passing of him and her being hypothermic and yeah. And this was the exact same unit and her losing her fiance and her losing her fiance. And I said, I went over and took a food tray. This is who I responded to Miss Jody here. And I took a food tray and the family kept telling me how sorry they were that this had happened to me. Number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, they just rejoiced. They kept looking back and saying, you know, 
he would get up every morning. We hadn't met him and hadn't seen him in two and a half years because of COVID. Uh, he's in the military. We're in Tennessee, Texas, Oklahoma, all together. We finally got back together. He would get up every morning and make us breakfast. And this is the tragedy of our lives, but we made the greatest memories right before this happened. So I'm going to truncate some of this real quick. Um, because Jody says this trip was originally planned many months ago before, as I hope to celebrate the completion of my sister's <coughs> chemo and radiation. My sister was in remission for over 10 years of her life, and at 29 years old, cancer returned to her again. Chemo and radiation proved to do very little, and shortly after her 30th birthday, she found out that her cancer had spread, and she made a decision to stop treatment. So from the time that they booked this, that they thought they were going to be celebrating her remission. Mm -hmm. to the time that they came here, which was less than 60 days. This is how life turns about. <clears throat> she found out that the cancer had spread. She made a decision to stop treatment and live her life as much as possible while she had time left. This trip went from a celebration of life and a celebration of treatment to a celebration of what a life she had had and the life that she has left. Jody, six years younger than me, this is the sister writing this, mm -hmm. is the light of my life. She's a beautiful, hardworking, loving, and kind woman. Easton, her godson, adores her with all he has in him. Life will never be the same when her times come. I hope to see her live her life, what's left, brightly, boldly, and joyfully. Fully knowing that she is loved so deeply. I love Jody with my heart, and I will miss you in all my days until we leave to meet you in heaven. Keep me a warm seat next to you. <sighs> and I look forward to hugging you tight in the days ahead. And that's why you share Hot Springs Village. That's why I share Hot Springs Village. That's why I share short-term rentals. Randy, we would have never met had it not been for a short-term rental. This is not a short-term rental commercial, but I'm trying to explain to you people who may have a burr in your butt about this. These people would not come here and have these memories if it were not for a short-term rental. Well, they the don't whole, have these kind of memories at a hotel. No, and the whole, pla the whole place was built on it. But, I mean, the irony, to, the irony to me is Cooper, Cooper built the place. He built the place on short-term rental. For these uh, memories yeah sure. yeah you know for uh, you know to sell to sell the dream that was hot springs village the dream that that we have seen over 52 years now or so come to fruition yeah is it perfect no i've lived in bedford texas for over three decades and it ain't perfect either but it's home and i love it uh the schools are good the trash gets picked up the water comes on the kids got educated here you know, the people that I love, I, I, I say it all, all the time, you know, the people that I love are here family, but the place that I love is there, yeah. uh, you know, and when you can assemble like these two stories, you just told where a family can assemble at a place like that for some moment in time, you know, I came over because of a personal tragedy. No, I'm not going into it, but I came over to hot Springs village because of a personal tragedy, a deep, deep tragedy. There was I a need, crisis in your life. Too. I needed to get away and I needed to be in nature and I needed to walk trails and Rhonda and I just needed to figure some things out. And that's what, that's what brought me. And we rented your bedroom suite, you know, right downstairs from where you're sitting right now. That was our first foray into the village. You know, the short-term rental stuff and, you know, not to hijack the conversation, but 
kind of sorta. My experience as a renter and my experience with host and my experience with neighbors, 100% of the time I meet the neighbors and I usually meet the neighbors because they notice Texas plates on our car. Ah, I see you're from Texas and they engage us in conversation and it couldn't be more pleasant. Um, these are people that are bringing a boatload of money into the village. I heard the general manager make a, a Kelly Hill in his annual report, you know, commented about, about the golf and whatnot and how many rounds, you know, were from non-members were from, you know, from outsiders. And I mean, the number is, the number is huge and it's like, yeah, we're just, we're not even going to think about that. We are in such a state of fear mongering in America now that it's absurd. And I know I've gone to waxing a little bit political, but it is what it is. You know, people are afraid of the one-off thing that could go wrong. That could, it happened. You experienced it firsthand right across the lake. A young man died in those waters that you see in, in the video behind Dennis. Okay. So what should we do? Stop everything. No, that family wouldn't want it. That young man wouldn't want it. Uh, he, it, it was a tragedy. It was horrible. You know, it was an accident, you know, I mean, can we legislate that? Can we implement rules and Oh, but you know, these wild parties and whatnot. I mean, I'm a little bit tired of all the anecdotal evidence, which is no evidence at all, you know, of people that don't know firsthand, but they've heard, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, mm -hmm. I've heard over in hot Springs that this happens and that happens. And the city manager of hot Springs told the board himself, cause I watched it. I mean, he admitted that, you know, I mean, the complaints are in the minority. Mm -hmm. even over there. And yet they're going to spend a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort. It could be argued to fix a problem that may not be a problem. Not saying that there aren't issues, but I've had neighbors that were jerks. You know, I've had neighbors that didn't mow their yard. I've had neighbors that wouldn't pick up stuff. So I don't know. I, I just, the place is so gorgeous. And there are so many people who listen to our podcast that would love to visit it. And without a place to stay. Yeah. Okay. They could come inside and drive around, but it ain't the same. It ain't the same. I told somebody the other day, we come for a week at a time. Mm -hmm. I had easily, easily spent a month there over say four trips before I even began to get my bearings by the time we got to, to trip number five or six. Okay. I kind of sort of have a feel for the place. John Paul told us you come in here, you move here. It's going to take you four years. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. He, he said he didn't think anybody should run for the board unless they'd been here <laughs> at least two or three years, you know, because it takes a valid point. Well, he's got a real valid point because you can think, well, it's not that big of a community as far as population. Yeah, but it's 26,000 acres. I mean, it's just like you go driving down some street and you're like, well, I've, I've never seen this before. You know, it's 500 miles of roads, people. I mean, it's just, and it's, it's just, it's gorgeous every everywhere you turn. Yeah. That's a great story. I mean, as a host, it's got to make you, it's got to make you feel good though. I mean, even though you tear up and it's emotional, I mean, it's just got to make you feel good to be I part said, of that family. Yeah. Well, I said from day one, you know, and I don't, this, I don't let this sound wrong. Diane and I are professionals. I'm an IT guy. I have other interests to business and business interests. She's a CPA. We're not going to be eating beans tonight. You know, it'll be, oh, okay. you're making gobs of money through the ads that we're. Selling. Oh yeah. If these ads are just pouring it down, <laughs> knocking it down. Yeah. Yeah. But no, what I was going to say is, is that we learned early on that the money is nice with Airbnb. That's that's okay. Yeah. That that's, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but yeah, that's nice. But seeing families make great memories 
and, and to hearing people, you know, when I was a kid, we used to come here and I would hang out with my grandparents. I remember we had the greatest vacations. We had the best memories. We, you know, okay. What video games did you play? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what, what did, would you run? What internet? Oh, you didn't have internet. Really? Really? And, and if you want to see your kids, and I'm saying this to those of you who are listening and watching, if you want to see your kids change, bring them to a place where you can wake up tomorrow morning and there's a bald eagle in the, on the lake across the way. Wake up to a place where the bear swims across the lake. Wake up to a place where there's bear dens less than a mile from here. Wake up to a place that it's real. It, you, don't get a, you don't get a redo button. It's not a video game. It's not staged. It's just real. And you watch your kids, just like we were, Randy, when we were kids. Do we have to come in? It's dark, but do we have to come in? Yeah, it's dark. Come on in. Uh, just give me, give me the deer and the chipmunks and the birds, and I'm good. You know, truth well, be told, just give me the chipmunks. <laughs> I mean, the chipmunks are pretty. The chipmunks are pretty interesting to me, you know, because we they don't are. have those. we don't have those here. We had, we had uh, when I moved here, I had a little black and tan Sheltie. I, I told everybody he was a lassie dog I left in the dryer too long. He was possibly the perfect dog. He really he was a unbelievably great dog. Well, he was like scraps here. You say that? Well, no, scraps is scraps is trying to fill his shoes. He's, he was like thirty eight pounds. He wasn't thin. He wasn't fat. He was just he was just a good. He was a pretty dog, and he was always just really really fun. And, uh, the neighbor called me one time, this is before Donna and Connie next door. He called me, he said, uh, you know, Dennis, uh, we're, we're have to talk about something. Okay. He said, your dog at the time, probably 14, your dog tore up my drain. I said, my dog did what? He said, yeah, there's a little chipmunk that ran up inside that drain and my, your dog went and took and bit and just kept biting the, the until I'm like. I will hire, I will take somebody, we'll, we'll fix the drain. That That's okay. Okay. Uh, but you know, ch- y'all don't have chipmunks at all. Mm-mm. No, no, mm-hmm. no. I, they're, and they're awesome. They're awesome. They're, they're yeah, if, you, if you live where there are no chipmunks, you need to get to the village. You need to get there <laughs> straight away. These are out oh, there. Oh, they're hysterical. They're hysterical. We, we, we digress, but explore the village.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in today. Randy, anything else? And thanks for advertising. Yeah. Thanks for advertising. We have, we have spots available. We're that, we are that commercial. Mm-hmm. We will t- mercilessly take your money. Yep. Thanks Say again for Hot then. Springs Village Inside Out. Thanks for listening to another episode of Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a podcast where Hot Springs Village, Arkansas is the star. Please subscribe to the podcast. You can do that by visiting our website, hsvinsideout.com and tell a friend.